Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. You can't say we haven't been warned. From cradle to the grave, we are piously advised that the love of money is the root of all evil. We are urged to be moderate in all things, and we are reminded of the futility of greed by aphorism and fable. But it doesn't do much good, for there seems to be a little larceny lurking in the best of us, and one place where it's sure to show is at the roulette table around which the action of our story revolves tonight. Listen, listen then as John Lund stars in Win or Lose All, which begins in exactly one minute. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe? Yeah, Daphne? Look at this story about savings bonds in the paper. Yeah, what about it? Do you think that's the best way to tell people about savings bonds? Why not? Look, see, it says here that savings bonds are a guaranteed investment. Right now, they pay off at the rate of four bucks at maturity for every three bucks invested. Uh-uh. You're not convinced? Mm-mm. Why not? No salesmanship. No salesmanship? What more do you need to know? Why, right now, more than eight million Americans are buying saving bonds regularly through the payroll savings plan. So? So what? That's what I say. So what? Now, look, Daphne. If millions of Americans are convinced that saving bonds are their best investment, not only financially, but for the future of their country, what the heck is bothering you? Well, I think they could sell a lot more with salesmanship. You know, slogans and jingles. L- listen, if you're spending more and saving less, try a savings bond. Oh, boy. Or, or maybe... Uh, Savings bond pay good like a, an investment should. Daphne. You get a lot to like in a savings bond. Interest, earnings guaranteed. Wow. Well, did I sell you? Yeah, but I forgot what it was you were selling. <laughs> savings bond. I'll take a hundred. Oh, Joe. And now. Winner Lose All, starring John Lund. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Las Vegas, the sucker city. The land of the money cow. And in my pocket I had a permit to milk it. A system to beat the wheel. But first, I had to convince one of the farmers tending the cow that I wasn't going to take too much. And that wasn't going to be easy. After about a week of nosing around, I decided on the place I was going to hustle. The owner was a guy named Carlin. Walter Carlin. And he wasn't doing as well as he wanted to, but then... Who is? Come in. Mr. Carlin? That's right. Who are you? My name is Bob Richards. I got a proposition for you. Goodbye, Mr. Richards. Now listen to me for one minute. I said goodbye, Mr. Richards. But I want to give you something for nothing. Nobody ever gave anybody something for nothing. I will. Guaranteed. All right. You got one minute. Make your pitch. When was the last time you had a spread in the New York Times? Ah, come on, son. Quit playing. This is a small place compared to the joints out in the strip. And you're not only small, but your business is way off. Isn't it, Mr. Collins? I said I'd give you a minute to make a pitch, not to discuss my business. That's part of my pitch. I can put this place on the front page of every newspaper in the country. Keep talking. You have 30 seconds. Okay. I've got a system for roulette. Oh, come on. Oh, I know everybody's got some kind of a system, but I got one that'll win. Now, the only trouble is, when the house finds somebody's got a winning system, the table's closed after a while, or the betting's limited. Now, here's my pitch. You let me win $200,000. 200000 well, Let me finish. You let me win $200,000. It'll take about a month to 40 days. All I want for my share is fifty grand in cash. And you've got yourself a million dollars worth of publicity. You expect to walk in here, take two hundred grand out, then return one hundred and fifty when you're finished? <laughs> I wouldn't even trust myself to do that. I didn't expect to take the two hundred grand out. Now, that's too tempting. Huh? The house can keep my winnings for me until such time as I decide to quit, which in this case will be 200000 
I don't know. Remember those two college kids and what they did for that joint in Reno? And they only went for a couple of weeks and a few grand. You're sure your system works? What do you care? If it works, you're in. If it doesn't, I lose my own dough. All right. On one condition. Name it. Stretch it out to two months and you got a deal. I can really use that kind of publicity. Okay. When do you want to start? Tonight. Fine. Oh, just one more thing, Richards. Yeah? Be a smart boy. Don't try anything that might get you into trouble. Well, the only thing that could possibly get me in trouble is your 200 grand. And how could I possibly get my hands on it? See you later, Mr. Collin. After I finish this trick here, honey, we'll head for Rio, Buenos Aires, Monte Carlo, oh. the whole circuit. Everywhere we go, we'll pick up a bundle like this one. Oh, Bobby, you are the clever one. Well, naturally, I picked you, didn't I? <laughs> Bobby. Yeah? When do we get married? As soon as I turn this trick. Well, why not now? Because I want the South America trip to be a honeymoon. Okay? Okay. Well, I gotta get going. Maybe I'll drop in later and watch you. No. Well, why not? Stay out of there. I don't want anybody to know about you. Well, what's the matter? Are you ashamed of me? Oh, of course not. But I want him to think I'm a lone wolf. It's safer that way. Be there, baby. Be there. 24, Blackie. Hey. <laughs> That'll cost you 1,080 bucks, don't he? Yes, sir, Mr. Richards. You've got a real hot streak going. A real hot streak. Well, that's it for now, Stoney. Be back tomorrow, Mr. Richards? Why not? This first week is only the beginning. Double zero green. Hey, <laughs> Pay me. I guess I'm just lucky, Stoney. Just lucky. Here are the figures for the week, Mr. Collin. Uh, you want detail or a quick rundown? Just a quick rundown. Okay. Uh... This is for the third week of operation since the kid came in with his system. Mm -hmm. He's into the house for about $83,000. And it? In that same period, our gambling gains have doubled. The bar is 500% over, and uh, see right here, the morning business is almost triple what it was four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another magazine crew coming in to do a layout this evening, too. Well, take care of them. Give them everything they want and don't let them spend a dime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's cheap enough for the publicity we're getting. you, Bobby? Yeah. Hi. How'd you do tonight? Oh, not bad. Nine grand. Mm, how much is that all together? About 170,000. Oh, then another week or so and it's over. Annie, it's over as of tomorrow night. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm taking it. All of it. Tomorrow night. Oh, but what about your deal with Carla? Deals are for suckers. I know how I can get away with all of it. But you've got to help. Oh, Bobby, I'm scared. It's nothing to be scared of. Now, if you want to help me, say so now. If not, you'd better pack. Well, sure, I'll help, but I'm scared. All right. Now, I want you to buy a good used car tomorrow. Well, why? We've got a car. Will you stop arguing and listen to me? Sure, Bobby. Okay. Now, you leave here at 9.30 tomorrow evening. Drive north on Route 95. Mm -hmm. Now, five miles out of town, you turn around and park, heading toward town. When I leave, I'll drive to the same spot. Then I transfer to your car, and we head right back through town to L.A. And then? We're on our way to South America, baby. Free and clear. You couldn't really call it a gamble. It was a cinch bet. And the power of the press cinched it. I tipped Wally Campbell of National News Service to be at the joint that night with a photographer, and I was all set to make my play. Aren't you going to bet this one, Mr. Richards? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. 20 on black, 10 even, and 10 on the first 12. Thank you. All bets down. Here we go. Hiya, Bob. Oh, hiya, Wally. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, uh, by the way, I want to introduce you to Mr. Carlin. He owns this place. Uh, Mr. Carlin? Yeah? This is Wally Campbell of the National News Service. Oh, how do you do? Hello, Mr. Carlin. Eight black even. Well, I guess that does it. 
Taking a break, Richards? No, Mr. Carlin. No, I quit. Huh? I figure the house owes me exactly, uh, let's see, with what I have here, two, three, three fifty, exactly one hundred seventy-nine thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. But I... I want the croupier to have five hundred and fifty, so that leaves a round figure of one hundred seventy-nine thousand dollars. Well, look, I uh... want it in cash, and I want it now. Uh, Wally, you can start taking pictures any time now. Yeah, all right. Uh, Hank, come on over here and set up. Stoney, the table is closed. Yes, sir. Look, I want to... What are you trying to pull, Richards? I'm not trying to pull anything. I just want my money, that's all. Why, oh, you lousy double-crossing chiseler, I'll take... Uh, Wally, uh, over here, will you? Yeah, what do you want? Mr. Carlin wants to make a statement. Huh? Go ahead, Mr. Carlin, make a statement. Well, I, I, I really don't have much to say except... Except this proves that your wheels are completely honest. Isn't that right, Mr. Carlin? Yes, that's right. And Mr. Richards here proved it. Yeah. Uh, my money, Mr. Carlin? Uh, where's my money? In cash? Stoney? Yes, sir. Get $179,000 from the cashier. Yes, sir. Now, look, the uh, two of you stand in front of the wheel by that pile of chips there, will you? No, a little to your right, Bob. Here? Yeah, that's it. That's fine. You sure you know what you're doing, Richards? I knew when I came here. I won't quit looking, you know that. Sure, but you won't find me. Now, uh, uh, look, pick up a handful of chips, Mr. Carlin, and give it to Bob, will you? I'll find you. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't bet on it. I would. In fact, I'm betting $179,000 on it. In a moment, we continue with the second act of... Suspense. The Evolution of a Medal. In 1847, during the war with Mexico, Congress established a citation award for conspicuous service by members of the United States Army. This was the Certificate of Merit, strictly for Army enlisted men. In 1891, almost a half century later, non-commissioned officers became eligible to receive the certificate. No medal went with this award until 1905, when a coin-shaped medal in bronze bearing a Roman eagle was approved and adopted. The suspension ribbon was vertically striped in red, white, and blue. In July 1918, Congress abolished the Certificate of Merit, replacing it with the Distinguished Service Medal and the Distinguished Service Cross. The medal is awarded for exceptionally meritorious service to the government, while the cross is reserved to honor extraordinary heroism in connection with operations against an armed enemy. Before the Certificate of Merit was discontinued in 1918, 1,211 enlisted men had received the award. Given in recognition of gallantry in action or exceptionally meritorious service during time of peace, the Certificate of Merit retains an important place among America's historic medals. And now, starring John Lund, act two of Winner Lose All. It was easy. Almost too easy. I found myself with $179,000 done up in a nice gray canvas bag like they use in the bank. Now all I had to do was meet Annie, change cars, and I had it made. Annie. Annie's a nice kid. A $50,000 type kid. Not a $179,000 type. But for now, I needed her. For now. Maybe later I wouldn't. Is that you, Bobby? Yeah, it's me. Oh, boy, I began to get worried. Well, I'm here. Now get going. Is everything okay? I said let's get going. All right. Well, I'm getting into the back seat. I'm going to stay down on the floor. Drive easy and legal, and as soon as we're on the other side of town, let me know. Till then, don't say anything and don't look back. Just drive. His car was found north of town about five miles out. I guess he got into another car there. Well, then where'd he go? Name it and you can have it. Tonopa to Reno, Barstow to L.A., Berdue to El Centro to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Well, what do we do now? Find him. 
Nobody suckers me, nobody. Call the boys in Reno, Carson City, Frisco, L.A. Tell them I want Bob Richards. Tell them I want him bad. And alive. Bobby? Bobby? Hey, Bobby boy, where are you? Bobby! Mm. Hello? Yeah, hello. This is the Apex Travel Service. We're calling Mr. Richards to confirm his reservation for one on the 855 Transpolar Flight 358 to Paris. Pardon me? Mr. Richards, his reservation for tonight. Oh, for two? No, for one. I said, for who? Oh, Mr. Richards. What room did you want? 214. Well, this is room 212. You got the wrong room. No, I'm sorry. Oh, Bobby boy. Bobby boy, what a rat you are. Annie. What are you doing here? I told you to stay in your own room. Yeah, but I, I got worried. About what? About you. Oh, I can take care of myself. Now... Hello. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Right. Thank you. Who is that? The airport reservations desk. Confirming our reservations for tomorrow's flight to South America. Tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. 9 a.m. Now go back to your room and I'll see you on the plane tomorrow. I'll wait till the last minute before I board. Just playing a safe, you know? Uh, Bobby, where's the money? In a brand new suitcase stashed in one of those 24-hour lockers at the airport. <laughs> you don't miss a trick, do you? I can't afford to, honey. Now be a good girl. Run along. I'll see you on the plane tomorrow morning. So long, Bobby. So long, Annie. See you tomorrow. Yes, Bobby. Tomorrow. <laughs> Operator. I want to make a person-to-person -person call to Mr. Walter Carlin in Las Vegas. Yes, that's right. And please hurry. Why did you have to be such a rat, Bobby? In a moment, we continue with the third act of... Suspense. We have, together, ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom... This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. In addition to the obvious military organizations and commands of NATO, civilian council committees under the International Staff and Secretariat are constantly at work coordinating political affairs, information services, economic matters, production, logistics, scientific affairs, civil emergency planning and financial problems concerned with the maintenance of this vast and vigorous alliance. The United States of America is a part of NATO, you should be aware of and alert to the objectives and programs of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now, starring John Lund, Act Three of Winner Lose All. Say there, pardon me, but is this Hello, Customs Francis. Gate 21? Three, yeah. Five, eight, uh, are you four, taking the Transpolar? Yeah. Business? Combination. Uh-huh. Say, it's a nice suitcase you have there. Thanks. I'll bet you it holds a lot of money. What's that? Might even hold $179,000. Why, you... Uh, right now, you're lucky. Don't stretch it. Get on that plane and you're dead. What do you want me to do? Now, that's your business. Just don't get on that plane. You want me to go back to Vegas, don't you? Well, now, sir, that's up to you. And if I don't? That's up to you, too. Let me in, quick. What's the matter, Bobby? You look pale. They found me. Who found you? Carlin. I don't know how, but he found me. Where'd they find you, Bobby? At the airport? Yeah, they found me. What did you say? They found you at the airport, didn't they, Bobby? Getting on the Paris plane, just as I told them to. Why, you Mr. dirty... Mr. Carlin was very glad to know where to find you. 
$5,000, Glad. I'll break your neck. No, no, you won't, Bobby. Mr. Carlin sent me a bodyguard, too. He's in the next room. Of course, he isn't as clever as you. But what good is clever? Do something clever now, Bobby. Better give Mr. Carlin his money or bang, you're dead. <laughs> You got a bus that goes to Mexico? Not direct. You change at San Diego for San Isidro, and you get a bus San Isidro to Tijuana. Fine. How soon does it leave? Oh, about an hour. 11.55 p.m. Okay, give me a... T- Bang, you're dead. Get on that bus and you're dead. Leave me alone! Like I said, don't stretch your luck. Taxi! Taxi! Where do you want to go, mister? Take me. Take me to Las Vegas. Hey, that's more than 300 miles. Cost you a bundle. I don't care what it costs. It's not my money. Well, here it is, Carlin. I spent about a thousand. No, Bobby boy, I don't want it this way. What? Not this way. Well, then, then then, how? Go downstairs to one of the roulette wheels and start playing. What? With your money? That's right. But don't bet more than $50 at one time. You got a system? Lose with it. Lose the whole 178 grand. But, but that'll take months. That's right, Bobby boy. Months. But think of the publicity I'll get. Suspense, in which Mr. John Lund starred in William N. Robeson's production of Winner Lose All by Ross Murray. Supporting Mr. Lund in Winner Lose All were Rita Lynn, Lou Merrill, Eddie Marr, Jack Crucian, and Sam Pierce. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.